Woodford Green. It's really delightful. It's a lovely bit of uh, countryside that got sucked into London, but it still retains its rural character. It's about 6 p.m., but it's still about 30 degrees. When I go up onto Pole Hill, I need to feel the need to get onto high ground. London is a place kind of wrapped in tragedy at the moment. So the vague plan is to just to go down to Chingford along the road, so not terribly interesting, and then up over Pole Hill. And from there, possibly taking a series of hills as Yardley Hill and Gilwell Hill. Wow, look at this view from Woodside Road, Woodford. It's incredible, isn't it? Another little corner of the forest I'd never seen before. This is uh, just off of Forest Side, near the Warren Pond. You can see one of the little bushcraft shelters they've made. just over the road there. Very tempting of course to go that way but uh, Chingford Golf Course kind of gets in the way so you'd have to loop back to Pole Hill. So I'm actually going to go down uh, Chingford High Street. I did pretty much this walk uh, a few years, probably about three years ago. I can't remember where I started, probably started in Loughton, went past the hunting lodge, oh no actually I started at home in Leightonstone, went past the hunting lodge and then hmm, I started in Buckhurst Hill through Night and Wood, came down to the hunting lodge and then went to end the walk, went to get some food, came down to Chinkford High Street for the first time. It was like uh, time travel, it was like the 1950s. And then that's when I found my way up to Pole Hill and then ended up actually in Waltham Cross about 10 o'clock. So this section here, I'm retracing my steps. Chingford Green kind of feels like it's been left behind by the rest of London. It's got such a lovely feel to it. I know it's not an opinion that would be universally held. This is the uh, Millennium Heritage Mosaic on the side of Chingford Assembly Hall. Gives you like a potted history of some of the notables associated with the area. The hunting lodge at the top there, which you'll be familiar with in these videos. Queen Elizabeth I, obviously, that's her hunting lodge. The uh, Anglo-Saxon farmers that farmed this area. That's the original parish church, which I think dates from the 12th century. Lawrence of Arabia, T. Lawrence, and we'll talk more about him in a bit, little bit. The Fair Mead Oak, that was the oldest tree in the forest until it burnt down. Queen Victoria, quite tenuous, she stopped here. The Hunt, the Railway. Winston Churchill. I love this little hall here. Mornington Hall. This is the most uh, northeasterly point in London. From here you're heading out of the city into Essex. It's the part of London that doesn't really want to be in London, if it was honest. See uh, letters in the local paper that say that are signed uh, from Chingford, Essex. So beside the King's Head pub here, you can see just beside the car park and that's going to take us up to Pole Hill. Quite a steep climb now. I can't remember the exact height of Pole Hill, it may tell us at the top there. I think it's something like 91 meters, something like that. I'll put the correct information on the screen. 
And now the final ascent to the obelisk on the top of Pole Hill, which uh, is the other end of the original Greenwich Meridian line. As we'll learn more about that when we get up there. It's also got another interesting story. If you remember T. Lawrence back there. I guess the first time I came here, which is I think it's three years ago, almost exactly, actually same time of the year, I found it by accident because I just followed that footpath behind the pub. So here's the trigger point on the top of Pole Hill. And look, there's the view. the obelisk. I'll read out the inscription otherwise I'll uh, get that information incorrect. So it says this pillar was erected in 1824 under the direction of the Reverend John Pond MA, Astronomer Royal. It was placed on the Greenwich Meridian and its purpose was to indicate the direction of true north from the transit telescope of the Royal Observatory, the Greenwich Royal Observatory full stop. The Greenwich Meridian has changed in 1850 and adopted by the International Agreement in 1884 as the line of zero longitude passes 19 feet to the east of this pillar. So this is the centre of the world. And the top of this hill was owned by T.E. Lawrence, Lawrence of Arabia, until 1930. It was always his intention to build a house here. In fact, uh, he had a place here with his university friend Vivian Richards, who was a teacher at Bancroft School. And they built like a hut here where apparently Richards lived. Now, Will Ashen writes about this in his book, uh, Strange Labyrinth, and I believe the hut still exists somewhere. There's a really lovely little bit of woodland here, right down the spine of Pole Hill. Well, that's a relief. I remember coming to this point, the first and actually the only time I've been down here, and uh, it took me completely by surprise. I'd never been over this side of the forest before and uh, really, uh, it was a really wonderful moment. I doubt it'll come out in the video, but it's so still out here this evening. It's about half seven and it's still 29 degrees. And there's, the air is completely still. It's really wonderful, really beautiful, incredibly therapeutic. So now we're moving on towards Yardley Hill. And after that is Gilwell Park, which is the, uh, the Scout Centre. That's so beautiful out here. And this is Yardley Hill. A beautiful field right on the edge of London. times when there's nowhere I'd rather be than in a field on the edge of London around sunset. You can look back at the city and it gives you a real sense of uh, perspective on everything. So at the top of Yardley Hill now God, I'm puffed out. <laughs> Very steep. And looking across now, that dense woodland over there, that's the Hawkwood. What a great name. The Hawkwood. Makes me think of Sir John Hawkwood, the famous English mercenary from Essex, who made his fame in Renaissance Italy. And there you have the view much better from up here than it is from Pole Hill because I think we're a lot higher up. So unfortunately the zoom on this camera isn't quite adequate. But over here, I'll point there with an arrow, in the bottom left corner you've got the city skyline, the Shard, and the towers of the City of London. And down 
here on the right, we've got the reservoirs, the Lee Valley reservoirs. Really stunning view. There's nobody up here. So this is uh, Gilwell Park, one of the main scout centres, national scout centres. Do a lot of their activities here. And these gates here are called the Leopard Gates and they were carved in, I think it said 1927. A bloke called Don Potter. I think now I have no choice but to go along this little road here and then I'm going to turn off towards Barn Hill. And then down towards Seawardston, I think is the best way to go. So according to the OS map, this is Seawardston Green. And uh, yeah, somebody did this walk, I didn't know this footpath was here. And you can probably hear the car just over there, it's one of those horrible death roads that I hate. I mean, who wouldn't hate a death road? So it looks like I can get some relief by going along this little footpath. Short sure, little bit of death road action, but not many cars on it. And it brings you to this glorious little break in this narrow strip of trees. Wait to see what's on the other side. Isn't that beautiful? This is a great end to a walk, although it's not the end to the walk because you've still got to find transport when you drop down into Seawardstone, but it's a really beautiful thing to come to near sunset. So looking over there towards Lippitz Hill, Fern Hill is the edge of Epping Forest. You've seen that in a, in a previous video. I'll link that below because it, I suppose, joins up and fills in that part of the map. And now you can see why I wanted to come up here to Barn Hill. Possibly the best view of them all with the gods shining down on brims down. This gravel track here I think is the one that takes you down to Seawardston, Seawardston Road. Last time I went the wrong way and I had to vault over a barbed wire gate that was uncomfortable. <laughs> Hopefully it won't be the same again. As feared, it's the same <laughs> barbed wire gate. Uh, I'm not going to clamber over it this time, I've got more time on my hands. So I'm wearing shorts, I don't want to cut my legs open. I'll go round. Here we are at Seawood Stone, or Saywood Stone, I think someone corrected me recently. Saywood Stone, named after a Saxon kind of chieftain who settled the area. I think from here I'm just going to walk the short distance over to Enfield Lock. Well, short distance, what I think is a short distance anyway. This path here should take me down to the River Lee. Then across the sacred lee to Enfield Lock. It's funny, I, I walked through here about the 17th of December. So what, four days before the winter solstice where I was walking from Leightonstone to where, but I walked along the path there. I got followed by some horses just along here. And today is the 18th of June, which of course is three days before the summer solstice. Coincidence actually. Or was it? Interesting, so this is a good solstice walk to pass through the Lee Valley. In this case I'm passing across the Lee Valley and on that day I was walking up the Lee Valley. So I've just got a short walk now 
about a mile through the streets of Enfield to Enfield Lock Station. Another train home. What a lovely walk. Midsummer evening walk. <laughs>